Okay, so I had a question from a subscriber about how do you create pages in QLC Plus in the Virtual Console. So uh, here's a little tutorial about creating pages. First of all, let me take a look at our light setup. Just did something simple here. Everything here is just generic dimmers, one channel. I have four work lights, DMX channels one, two, three, four. Uh, I have six front of house lights, DMX channels 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then six downstage lights, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I've also gone into the functions menu and created a couple of scenes. I've got a all full scene where all the lights are up full, downstage full, front of house full, and then work lights full. So just a couple of simple scenes here. So let's go over to the virtual console. Since we're working on creating pages and kind of making our virtual console look nice, something about the background here. You'll notice right now that I do have scroll bars bottom and top. You can eliminate these scroll bars if you want to control what the size of your screen is. When we're just working with the virtual console to start with here, go up here to this tool, virtual console settings, and we can set the height and width of the desktop here. So if I set this to around 1500 width wise, you'll see this is the width. So it's not quite wide enough to fit my screen. So I'm going to make it a little bit larger. Let me try about 1800. And that works. I have some little borders here on the end, so I'm probably going to go 1850. Now, you notice that my scroll bar disappeared down here because now my virtual console page fits on my computer screen. So you can set this up to fit your particular laptop screen. Let's fix this uh, vertical. It says 1080. Let's try uh, 950. See what that looks like height-wise. We still have a scroll bar over here. Let's try maybe 9 and a quarter. Ah, there you can see it. Okay, so you can see the outline here. So that is our virtual console surface. Now, a little bit of eye candy wise, if you want to, you can right click on here and then say background and pick a background color or background image if you like. So I'm just going to do, let's just do a dark black or a dark blue background color on here. So the whole virtual console turns dark blue for us here. Okay. You can also include images if you want to, to uh, and it will tile them. So um, actually, while I'm on here, I can do I can do that. Let's do background image, and I'm just going to go to my desktop, and I have some texture files set up here. I'll choose one of those, and I'm going to do just this general brush seamless texture here. Now notice that it set it kind of set it up in squares. So sometimes some of the textures you pick won't look all that great. Let me pick this rough metal one, see what that looks like. Okay, now to create pages, everything here works within frames. Although you can place widgets right on the desktop here without putting them in frames. But if you want to do pages, you have to work with frames. And that's either your independent frames or your solo frames, okay? So I'm just going to do a new frame here and bring this up. Notice that the frame is transparent. If you want to change that with this frame selected, just go to the colors here and select it. Let's like say we select blue. Now that will go to blue. And that's how I can do some eye candy here. Okay. We're going to put some faders up here to control our lights. So let's say I want to pick my um, four front of house lights. Have this frame selected though while you do this. Click up here and say I want four sliders and then this could be your height and width and size of the sliders. You'll have to determine what you would like. And it creates four sliders for me. So again, notice that these are transparent. If you would like these to be a different background color, simply select them. And let's just say I'm going to give these uh, this background color here. So now they become that. Now, I would assign these to my four work lights. If you watch my other videos, I'll just do one quickly here. I double click on this fader. I'm going to go to level mode, switch to level mode, and I'm going to go to work light one and select that. While I have this selected, I can put a label up here. I just call it WK1 for short. That's work one for me. 
And also, as far as eye candy goes, when you have any of these things selected, you can go up here and you can go uh, a little bit larger if you want. And if you want to go bold, and you notice that it changes the font and stuff on there. Also, another thing to consider, whether you want this actual DMX or you want percentage, and I'm going to select percentage. So I would normally go through, associate this with work like 2, work like 3, and work like 4 to get that all set up. Now, the reason I put my work lights on there is I have a plan here. I'm going to put sliders on here, but I would like my work lights to always appear on every page. So I put them up here first. Now, you can either right click and you can do widget properties, or you can simply double click on this background. It comes up either way. Now we go to the pages menu, and then you go to enable pages. Now, here's where you have to make a decision how many pages. So I'm going to plan in my mind, I'm going to do um, a first page with my work light sliders and in my front of house sliders on it, a second page with my work light sliders and my downstage sliders on it, and then a third page with my work light sliders and some buttons on there. So we'll do three pages. Now, here's where you have to make this decision, and you want to put these sliders in first. If I want to clone anything that I've already created, I check this box. That means that these four sliders will now appear on every one of my pages. You only get to do this opportunity one time when you're first on this pages menu. After we come back after this anymore, you won't be able to use that clone button. So you kind of have to have a plan in advance if you want to include something on all the pages. You have to have that plan, put the item in, put the widget in, then go up here and say clone those items. So that is why I co-created my four sliders for my work lights because I want those to be on every page. Circular scrolling just means we're going to end up with a scrolling forward and backward arrows up here to go through the pages. If I want to be able to keep going forward and, and it'll go page one, page two, page three, and if I go forward again, it'll scroll back to page one. That's called circular scrolling. So I'll say, yeah, that's okay. I'll, I'll check that. Also up here, you can use MIDI commands to negotiate through your pages here. So if you're using uh, external MIDI controls to jump through the pages, you can do that. You can also use key combinations. So that's what this is. This is previous page using a MIDI command to do that or key combinations or next page. So if you're using like a tablet or something like that, and you want to be able to jump back and forth like I'm using Touch OSC and I want to be able to jump back and forth. For right now, I'm just going to be doing everything on screen so there's not going to be any MIDI combinations or key combinations here that I'm going to use. Down here, I get to name my pages. Okay, so page one right now is just called page one. And I'm going to actually relabel this front of house. So I'm just going to put in FOH. And then I'm going to do page two. I'm going to relabel this downstage. And then I'm going to label page three buttons. Okay. And again, you can call up various pages by using MIDI commands or a key combination. All right. So you can actually use some shortcuts and do that. Just be careful that none of the key combinations match anything else that you might have up there that you're using. So, for example, a front of house page, I can use key combination and assign a key. I'm just going to hit my one key and then say OK. And then my downstage, my key combination, I'll click here. I'm just going to press my two key and say OK. And then my buttons page, I'm going to just label that three and then say OK. And then I'll finally click OK here. Now we can see everything come up. All right, a couple things that are going on here. This check mark here means that this frame is active. If you uncheck this, this frame will not put out any DMX information. So it's a thing that you can do is you can either activate the frame or deactivate the frame. So we're going to leave it active. If we go forward through here, you can see front of house downstage and buttons. I can use my uh, button, my numbers up here. One, two, 
three. Remember how we assign those keys, one, two, and three, to jump back and forth. And there's also a drop down menu here where I can go front of house, downstage, or buttons where I can jump around there. You notice that as I go to any of the pages, that the faders for the work lights are on all the pages because we told it that we wanted to have those cloned and appear on all the pages. All right, so now we're back on our front of house lights here. I'm going to click on my surface and I'm going to put in six faders. So I'll increase this to six. Just click OK. These are going to be my front of house faders. Um, while I have these selected on the border here, I'm going to change the color. I'm going to make these kind of like a light blue color. All right, so that gives them that background. And you can use textures, whatever you want to do there. And then I would go through and I would label these. So again, double click, come up. I'm going to call this front of house one, F-O-H one. Uh, I want to use percentage for this. I'm going to go to level control, switch to level mode. I want my front of house one light controlled by this slider. Okay. And just click OK. Again, I may want to change my font here. So while I have it selected, I'll go to a little bit larger. I'll go to 10 and I'll go to bold just to make it stand out a little bit more. And I would go through and then assign all of these to my front of house lights. Then we'll go to page two here. Now notice that these stayed because we were cloned to have these on every page. Over here, I'm going to put in my downstage lights. So again, click on the surface. Going to say six. These are going to be my downstage lights. Um, while we have it selected, let's give these a color. Maybe this uh, greenish color for those downstage lights. I'm going to do the same procedure here. I'm going to select this guy. Actually double click it. Going to call it DS1 for downstage one. I'm going to make it percentage. I'm going to go to a level mode here, switch to level mode. I'm going to go to my downstage one here and assign it to that fader and say OK. Um, I can go ahead and change my font here, make it 10 and bold. And again, I would go through and assign all my downstage lights for those. So, so far we have work lights with front of house. We have work lights with downstage. And then on my third page here, I can do buttons. Now I can either do individual buttons or uh, I can do solo buttons. So we can bring a solo frame in here. I'll click and just do a solo frame and put this in here. The solo frame, remember the purposes of a solo frame, it only allows you to select one thing at a time. If you try to select more than one thing inside of a solo frame, it won't allow you to. You can select one button and but when you press another button, it will cancel that out. Actually, when you're creating multiple buttons too, you can just use the multiple button command, which is here, and that will ask you whether you want this as a solo frame. But I'm going to do this. Let's just say I'm going to put a button in here. I'm going to click my frame, put a button in. It's called a button 31. I'm going to adjust the size of the button here. And while I have the button up, I can use Windows Convention for this. I will Control C for copy. Click here. Can say Control V. Notice that that button comes up here. Control V again. There's my button. Unselect that. Just click on the background. Hit Control V again. There's another copy of the button. So I have a couple buttons up here. Then of course you go through and you assign your buttons to functions. So I double click on this button here. Click on my function. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, work lights full. OK. It, first time you do this, it will actually assign the function to the button label. Um, that's going to be kind of a long label. So I'm just going to change this to WK full for my button. So that's the function it's connected to. And this is the button label that's going to be displayed. WK full. And again, in here, you can go ahead and change the font to a little bit larger say 10 and bold. So again, you can do that with for eye candy. You can go through and change any of these things. All right, just quickly here, I'm going to assign um, front of house full for this one. I'm going to let it go. Oh, and in button 31, we have to do, we have to give it a label F-O-H full because we had already used button 31 
FOH fool. Double click on this one. I'm going to assign this to downstage fool. Notice it's still the same button 31, so I'm going to downstage fool as the label. And then over here, this is going to be all full. So I'll sign that to all full and make my label all full. All right. So it's that easy then. So we have our frame. And now I can uh, adjust the size. Let's go back and take a look at how big we're going to need the frame. Clicking through, clicking through. Uh, I can adjust the size of this buttons one here a little bit. I can actually make it like that if we want to. And even in the button menu here, I can do background color and say that we'd like this to be dark red. And then it'll put all my buttons in dark red. Again, that's all just eye candy stuff that we're doing there, okay? And let's see. I'm going to just readjust the size of this frame so that we have it done there. Now, once you've got the size the way that you like it and everything thing seems like it fits in there, you could double click on the frame. And uncheck allow resizing, gets rid of that resizing thing. So now this won't accidentally, when we're in edit mode, we can't go and select this. You can put the resizing back in again where you'll be able to actually grab the corner and then, excuse me, grab the corner here and then resize the frame if you want. But like I said, I'm just going to do it, select it, double click, or again, it's either double click or right click and do widget properties and get rid of allow resizing so no resizing is there so all right so there we have it there's our uh, frame and we have sliders inside of there and in this case what I could have done is just put my work light faders over here so they aren't part of this frame and that way they would have stayed up all the way too so again it's just a design thing you design how you want the virtual console to look, which is really the beauty of this program. Uh, just as a little test here, remember I've only assigned some uh, sliders and stuff on here, but we'll bring it up. Let me bring up my DMX monitor and you can see that my work lights, my front of house lights and my downstage lights. So if I bring up work light one, you can see the values changing over here. Remember, I haven't taken the time to assign these yet. Here's front of house one. You can see the values changing over here. And here's downstage one. And you can see the values changing over here. Um, if we do work full button, notice that all the work lights come on full. Now again, solo frame, so watch what happens. When I pick this button, it automatically canceled this. That's what a solo frame does. It only allows you to pick one thing at a time, one button at a time. So I did front of house full. All my front of house lights came up full. Now all my downstage is up full. Now everything is up full. Notice that there's no timing for these because I'm using these buttons to directly access functions that are back here. And since these functions have no timing, the lights just come on instantly. Um, again, that's another video. If you want to do timing for this, you bring up your function. You click here and you say, I want a two second fade in, a two second fade out. So now that has been adjusted. Now if I go back to my virtual console, if I click this one, it's going to go away. Watch what happens when I do all full. These will take two seconds to fade in and you can see them fading up. Okay. That's again in one of my other tutorials. So it really makes sense to make sure you look at all my tutorials, the original tutorials one through 10, so you get a handle on how these buttons and sliders and all that kind of thing work in the program. One other thing I wanted to mention about pages that's very important. If you take a look at my uh, video about using MIDI control, and I'll post the link to that down below here. If you're using a MIDI controller, like a tactile surface, to control these faders, and I'm using MIDI controller channel one, and this is controller one, controller two, three, four, five, and six, you can use the same controllers on the next page. Um, and if I move any of my sliders, when I go to the next page, these sliders won't be moved. I can use the same controller numbers and assignments to move these sliders and it will not affect these sliders because you're on a separate page, okay? It's a little bit complex, but if you take a look at the link I have down below, I go through and explain about how that works a little bit more in depth.